Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Kerbal Space Program. Today we're taking a look at a mod, um, one of the oldest still popular mods there is in Kerbal Space Program. Um, a mod with a, a distinguished history and something of an uncertain future, which is um, one of the reasons I wanted to make this video, uh, but uh, more on that a little later. So what is the mod? The mod in question is Ferrum Aerospace, and uh, basically it's an aerodynamics model overhaul mod. Um, I mean, over the years, the aerodynamics model in Kerbal Space Program uh, is, well, it's gotten a lot better than it once was. I mean, there's just been steady improvements, and it's virtually unrecognisable now, but uh, for those who want to go the extra mile, for those who want to get their KSP aerodynamics as close to reality as possible, this is still something of a go-to mod, and um, it kind of makes aircraft a little bit tricky to design. Um, well, case in point, uh, here we have the Sparrow, uh, an aircraft I designed very early on in uh, the uh, the Journey Begins series, uh, and it was uh, it was a nice little aircraft, just a little uh, science explorer. And uh, one of the reasons I designed it like this um, because, uh, well, I designed it to be stable in flight without having to use stability assist, and something which it managed quite well. But I want to go and see how it fares with Ferrum Aerospace installed. So, um, well, let's get going. Fire up the engines, uh, throttle up, turn the brakes off. Now, with stock KSP, this would just um, would just uh, gradually accelerate to I don't know, it's around about somewhere between 60 and 80 meters per second, and would then just lift off of its own accord, and uh, all all was well. Uh, this, however, I mean, we're getting up quite fast, we're veering a bit off the runway, still no sign of us lifting up. I'll try pulling back a bit. No joy. Oh, no. There we go. Oh, my word. Yeah, something is not... It's not behaving as it would in stock KSP. Um, as I said, the more complicated aerodynamics... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. A little bit of debris goes flying up into the air, and we have to send a bouquet of flowers to Jebediah's family. Yeah, as I said, makes it a lot more difficult to design a craft that behaves well, particularly without stability assist on. Okay, so that didn't go too well for me, so uh, let's see how the professionals get on. Now, this is the Mallard. It's one of the stock craft in KSP, and uh, I think I'm right in saying that it's the only stock craft in KSP that will fly stably um, without stability assist on. And when I say fly stably, I mean that if it's in straight and level flight, it will stay in straight and level flight. It uh, won't do what most aircraft will do without stability assist or any user control, uh, which is just to gently pitch down until it goes into the ground like a dart. Um, yes, anyway, let's get this uh, Let's get this flying and see how this one does. So, uh, no, we don't want that on. It sort of defeats the purpose of the exercise. Engines, throttle, brakes, and we're off. So, generally speaking, the main thing Ferrum Aerospace does is to uh, model the aerodynamics of the aircraft more accurately. Things like coefficient of lift, coefficient of drag. We'll actually look at how the aircraft is made and try and come to some understanding of its aerodynamics characteristics, and obviously then we'll simulate them. Okay. One thing I have noticed in these two launches is that it does take a lot more speed on the runway for um, for it to actually rotate and take off. Uh, I'm not sure if that's something to do with wing area or something to do with the uh, tail plane, but um, hmm. Also should throttle down. We're going quite fast. Uh, obviously not that fast in stock KSP, but if you're um, if you're trying to fly it without uh, stability assist, then you need to do things quite gingerly. Okay, that looks to be going quite well. Um, one of the other things K uh, Ferrum Aerospace does uh, is to uh, simulate what's inside and outside of the airflow. So stock KSP, if I had a bunch of wing surfaces inside this cargo bay, they would actually count for the uh, for the lift and drag calculations. But um, with Ferrum Aerospace. It will it will notice that they're not actually in the airflow, and all the all they'll count for is the extra mass. Uh, let's have a look. 
Okay, put the nose down a little bit. Let's see if we can go for a bit of a turn. Okay, wants to wobble about a bit. Yeah, so as we've seen, it does... Fair Aerospace does add a complicating factor to designing aircraft, which is probably why it's not on everyone's install list and why it's not integrated into the game, because I think KSP can be challenging enough for some users to learn without having to faff about having to learn advanced aerodynamics and the like. So yeah, all seems to be going quite well. Just uh, hands off of the keyboard, stability assist off, it's doing, it's flying quite well. A darn sight more, better than my plane did. Um, yes, I think the last big thing uh, Ferrum does is uh, with its uh, simulation of the atmosphere, the relative uh, atmospheric densities at different uh, altitudes. Uh, and this doesn't just affect, um, well I, I should say, doesn't really affect aircraft flying at this height that much, but with space planes and rockets it uh, it obviously will try and level the wings there. Probably not so much with your standard sort of large aircraft launch, at least not on the way up, but on the way down it might make a difference to a sort of re-entry and that the like. Um, but before we, uh, before we take a look at that, let's go and see how all this plays out in the space plane hangar. So here we are in the space plane hangar, and what goodies does Ferrum Aerospace have up its sleeve? Well, you start designing your aircraft. I've got the Mallard here open, and then we bring up this little window here. The uh, logo hasn't installed properly, so obviously I've done something wrong there. Um, so we, that clicking on that brings up this window. So if we just uh, click on raise gear to raise our gear, we can then get all sorts of... Well, let's just, let's just try it as is. So here we are, we get lots of uh, performance information about our aircraft. This is the various uh, aerodynamic characteristics at different angles of attack, at different degrees of pitch in other words. Things like coefficient of lift, coefficient of drag, oh my god, the horrors of university are coming back to haunt me. In force, um, what else can we do? We can uh, max sweep, we can look at uh, aer aerodynamic characteristics at various Mach numbers, there's a whole lot here to get your teeth into um, for the real the real aerodynamics nerds. Yeah, it, it Ferrum Aerospace really does make designing a decent aircraft um, a, a darn sight more complicated than it was previously, but, uh, but that's exactly what some people enjoy. Anyway, there's all sorts of analysis you can perform on your craft, but uh, I think we should leave the aircraft behind and go and take a look at spacecraft. So we're just going to go through this one really quickly. Uh, we're blasting off here from the KSC with one of my Brunel Mark I rockets. Another one of my vehicles from the journey begins. Uh, you'll notice on the top left of the screen I've got the Ferrum Aerospace window open. This just gives you a bit more information about uh, atmospheric data. There's a little flight data window you can open which gives you a lot more information about your, uh, your craft's uh, attitude and a couple of other things. And uh, there's flight settings. There's also these uh, flight assist buttons along the bottom, which uh, just sort of act as a more advanced version of stability assist. Uh, anyway, we get up into orbit without any problems, and with about the same amount of delta V left over as we'd expect um, if we launch this with stock. And it's pretty much the same thing going down. We get um, a pretty identical performance, near enough. Um, but this is not where the sort of the big changes come in. Um, the atmospheric changes I did mention a little bit earlier. Um, what Ferrum Aerospace did when Kerbal Space Program first came out uh, was to change the atmospheric modelling such that um, most of the drop-off in atmospheric density happens lower down. Now Kerbal Space Program has sort of updated its atmospheric model uh, over the years, so it sort of it also simulates that to some extent, but um, but Ferrum Aerospace still does take it that that little bit further. So, uh, yeah, we're not going to see the changes here. I think um, we're not really going to see changes that big with a rocket. Uh, we, we've seen big changes with, a, with an aircraft. Now I think we need something in between the two. So here I am with another one of my vehicles from The Journey Begins. This is my Mark III shuttle. We've uh, just entered Kerbin's atmosphere and we are on my standard rendezvous course uh, back to the KSC. That is... Um, if this was stock KSP and I just went through my normal procedure, then some fine adjustments notwithstanding, I would be able to come in pretty much straight in for a landing on the runway. However, this is not stock KSP, so there's a couple of things that could change that. First of all, there's the atmospheric um, 
the atmospheric changes. I think I've discussed all the relevant things there. Second of all, there's the aerodynamic changes. There's one last thing I want to mention about uh, aerodynamics in uh, Ferrum Aerospace that I think might come into play here. Um, I know I had a bit of trouble with those first two vehicles at the start of the video, getting them off the ground, um, but it might seem like the exact opposite is the case, but uh, with Ferrum Aerospace, it's actually possible to have much higher wing loading than it is in stock KSP, to the extent you can get some pretty spectacular structural failures um, that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get. So it's going to be interesting to see how those sort of two factors sort of interplay and uh, change things up here. Um, where are we? We're quite far out. I'm just going to time accelerate us forwards a bit until we get uh, to the part where I switch from uh, prograde to just stability assist. If you've watched my uh, my Journey Begins videos, you'll know uh, what my standard uh, my standard uh, approach methodology is, so I'm just going to switch to stability assist about there, and we'll just watch as it comes in, um, like it, like we normally do. Now I did say earlier I'd sort of also, I'd also discuss my reasons for making this video, reasons for picking Ferrum Aerospace, um, because as I said, it's one of the old, one of the oldest mods I think you can get, one of the oldest popular mods certainly. Um, KSP went into, uh, went into, uh, Early access eight years ago this year. Ferrum Aerospace came out seven years ago this year. So yeah, it's done phenomenally well, and it's managed to go this long without the thing happening to it that happens to most other mods that get this far. But it looks like it finally has happened, and that is um, I'm just going to slow down time acceleration a bit here <sighs> as we start to pick up a bit of heating and some aerodynamic forces as well, just in case I need to need to adjust things. Um, <clears throat> one thing you'll notice is my vertical speed is dropping quite quickly. Uh, I'm just going to time accelerate forwards to see if that continues. Yeah, we are now climbing. That's a new one. That doesn't normally happen when I do this in stock KSP, so that's a, that's a first for me. Anyway, we'll just, uh, we'll just Notch down the time acceleration again. So what was I saying? Yes, uh, Kerbal Space Program mods, what often happens with a lot of mods that get quite popular, just going to keep them with the nose pointed at about 45 degrees here. Um, the mod developer can update them and does quite well, but then sort of real life tends to kick in. And uh, the mod developer can't, uh, can't really put in as much time into it as he, he or she has previously been able to do and um, the mod misses some updates and eventually gets taken over by someone else and occasionally the second developer will then be unable to carry on developing it and it'll be taken over by someone else and the mods kind of get stuck in a limbo and that's it looks like that might have been might have been starting to happen with Ferrum Aerospace because an update came out for uh, Kerbal Space Program version 1.3 there hasn't been one since there's been sort of an unofficial half patch and work around for 1.4 which is what I'm using here there's an unofficial continuation which is an update for 1.5 but I just think it's it's such an important mod in the history of uh, Kerbal Space Program it's such an interesting mod I just wanted to sort of like feature it here I think it's worth just to raise a bit of an awareness keep the conversation going I make it sound like I'm on some major conservation effort here um you know Screw the whales, screw the pandas. Let's focus on this, guys. Uh, no, it's I just, it's just, I just. Well, yeah, I think I've said all I need to say on that issue. Um, but how are we doing with our general approach? We are still very high. We're coming in. Our, our we're not descending very fast at all. Um, yeah, it looks like we're going to overshoot the KSC by quite some considerable distance. Uh, hmm. Yeah, so um, normally by this point I'm, well, very low over the mountains, but um, I mean, we barely lost 300 meters per second of our speed. We're still 48,000 meters up and we're going to go screaming past the KFC at 1900 meters per second. So this is, if you're going to use Ferrum Aerospace, piece of advice. 
factor this kind of thing in. I mean, I so I should have started my descent a lot, lot earlier. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to have to leave it there. So that is our look at Ferrimera Space. Uh, I don't know where the bloody hell I'm going to land this thing. Um, anyway, yes, I'll put all the uh, relevant link links in the description. Um, well worth a look. Some people swear by it, won't play without it, although it's entirely understandable if you don't decide to make it part of your main install. Um, I've tried to go through all the big features, but there's still a whole load of stuff I haven't even touched on. Um, but that will be all for today. So uh, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.